call the uh, council meeting to order. Uh, before we get started, just have a couple of things to say. Uh, Virginia Beach has been named third in cities of its of the large cities in the country as being uh, uh, the best cities to live in. I know that. Uh, uh, that's pretty good. Ford's yeah. very proud of it. I think there was some announcement today. Someone told me they had heard we were the yeah, best city for veterans. Yeah, it was on the internet today, and I, I ran a copy of it. Yes, I hadn't seen that thing. But many people came by my office to tell me that. Uh, Overland Park, Kansas was number one. Plano, Texas was number two. Huh. And Virginia yeah, Beach was number well. three. <laughs> All right. Uh, Plano, Texas. Chesapeake was number eight. So, <laughs> yeah. that's, uh, that's pretty good. That's number three. Rain. Also, mm -hmm. also, uh, there's an article in the New Journal and Guide concerning uh, a lady at the table, Dr. Amelia Ross Hammond, and it uh, says that she's retiring from Norfolk State University after 45 years of teaching. You weren't supposed to read that and part. <laughs> I didn't think you she was 45 years, years old. So. How'd you start teaching at 10? <laughs> well, thank but you. Congratulations to you. Amelia. The mayor is out of town on an economic development trip with uh, Warren uh, Harris, and uh, so he won't be here today. We'll start with uh, city council comments. Are there any any comments anybody would like to make at this time? A, a couple. Uh, first and foremost, uh, Ben, Amelia, and I met with the African American Political Action Committee, but not three at the same Separately. time. Separately. Separately. Very clear about very clear about that. But one of the things concerns that they they raised were twofold. One which I've talked to the city attorney about is one because we have not ever officially conducted and done a disparity study, we don't have a legal basis for moving beyond the kind of uh, voluntary educational kind of programs that we do because we don't have a statistical basis baseline to, to work from that was required by the Supreme Court decision when they rendered saying, hey, you, you can do more aggressive things, but only after you've established what a baseline is, and then you can only do the most least restrictive things that are necessary in order to achieve <coughs> and to ameliorate the disparity that you find. Well, since we haven't established a baseline and a legal basis for the court foundation, we are just, I won't say stuck, we're in, we're baselining that all we're doing now is all that we can do. So what we need to do, in our opinion, is to establish the baseline and probably three or five years from now measure again. And only then and after then, if we still have the same underperformance or they still find disparity, can we legally, in comp compliance with the judicial standard, do something more than we're doing today? So I would like the Minority Business Council, which I believe you two, mm -hmm. too, Phil, to go back and how to bring something forward for the council to consider on that, because I know that takes an appropriation to do and go about doing that. But that's, that's one thing I wanted to bring up. The second one is they shared with us that it appears to them, I'm not saying it, it does exist, but it appears to them that in writing the RFPs, there is a bias, or there is a bias that tends to preclude minority firms of all of the full spectrum from qualifying. And they think that it's, uh, and the same firms consistently get always get the work. And even when they get in there and put their stuff, they're told that they're not qualified and they finally just give up. So that's one thing they're concerned about is looking at and what is, and there's no independent review process other than asking the very same people who wrote the proposal to look at it and say, is it biased? Well, surprisingly enough, the answer comes back the same. And the other concern is that when the evaluation process takes place, the credit, that they're not certain that how that's it's not very transparent to them. Now, it was also mentioned, Amelia did a great job, I might add, of having all the documentation from the staff, thank you, Mr. Spore, for having to, about all the things that they do and that people aren't showing up for the debriefs, which is a problem. Mm -hmm. And so that's true. And then everyone says, yes, but we used to come and nothing ever happened, so why go? Matter of fact, two people said they just stopped submitting 
bids all together because it, nothing changes, and so therefore there are other places to make money. That was one of the individuals that was there. And then when the fact that there are awards, there really isn't any process by which there is an independent review. When you ask it, obviously there's a 14-day notice, but there's no place to go like it came with the police department. There's no independent review panel that looks at procurement. Now, they didn't have the answer, nor did I. What I, what I told them with Ben and Amelia's concurrence, we would come back and say, ask the manager to take a look and what could we do to have some kind of independent review and under what basis when people, like any other complaint, you could BZA, you can go to the BZA Board of Appeals. There's lots of places that you can go for a third party review of many government decisions, but there's not one for procurement decisions. And we need to just look at that, and I'd like with the council's concurrence, not to say what the solution is, but ask the manager to take a look at that and come back with us with some ideas as to how we might address that concern. Yeah, and both Ben and I championed that part of it for the review, because um, besides that, I went um, to the Minority Business Council retreat, where we did have, if you remember, several ways back, uh, the mayor mentioned having um, the Hampton University look at possibilities. So there the presented and the uh, Minority Business Council members voted to move forward with something like that. Of course, all the logistics need to be done. But with that and also this transparency, you know, that we have an opportunity because if people don't know what they're doing wrong and then just give up. So this way, and I also want to credit um, Patty Phillips. I worked with her a lot, also pulling up some of that data about um, what were our strengths, what were the problems, how can we address it. So it was a very robust but a very good meeting. Don't you agree? Uh, absolutely, and I'd just like to add on to that. I agree with uh, the sentiments of John and Amelia. Um, I thought it was a productive meeting. Um, we heard from uh, an architect named Wendell Green, and he told us a story. I'm sorry. Oh, you, you, you weren't there. Well, he told us a story about um, going through the RFP process, and one of the impediments that he mentioned was uh, the price of preparing um, the RFPs. Um, and when you're a smaller firm, uh, you know, $1,000 to prepare an RFP, you know, uh, may, is, could be an impediment to... Um, you know, filing for additional RFPs. So anyway, I agree with them, and I'd like to see if we could look at that to, you know, hopefully make some improvement. Uh, um, you know, just to let you know, and I really appreciate my three colleagues, you know, engaging, you know, in this conversation. Uh, both Shannon and I sit up with the Minority Business Council, and I can give uh, the council and, you know, the public assurances that for a number of years we have been moving proactively, positively in this uh, direction. I think part of the problem is a lot of the accomplishments that we've made to date really haven't, you know, you know, made it out to the public in a, a very good way. Um, the thing with the uh, disparity study would be, you know, costly to do, and in the many ways it would ha it would just verify a lot of the other th things that we already know. But one of the things that um, our process improvement small business task force is looking at is exactly finding a lot of solutions to these type of problems that are out there. Uh, for instance, we did have, um, and I did speak to the mayor prior to his leaving, <coughs> a presentation from Hampton University, you know, where they, they have a template that they think that they could double the participation, you know, pretty much right off the bat, which is, you know, a very, very good start right there. But I can tell you that Mr. Thomas from um, Hampton University said there was one time uh, Hampton was putting out an RFP for a NASA project, and he said no minority companies, you know, even put in for the application. So I think there is a major disconnect out there in education and the process on how to do that. Um, there are strategies out there about, com uh, there are now companies, that, you know, we run the C uh, Contractors Institute, you know, where we uh, tell folks how to apply for the process. Uh, there was even companies out there uh, consulting where, you know, two competing companies might be actually unified to get together to put in a joint RFP to get it. Uh, one of the things we have to do is make sure that, you know, uh, the capacity to do the work is there. And the point is, though, I think it could be a process problem, and we are looking at 
you know, right now our committee, we have a survey out. We're looking to the barriers for all businesses, uh, for small business startup and expansion. And, and uh, based on that, we're putting together a study team that are going to come up with some very, very real solutions about, you know, because once again, we have to make sure that the businesses that are putting in, you know, for these uh, city contracts, or very stable businesses, you know, any business that we want in the city to be a very stable, you know, business, to start up properly and help out with the financing <clears> and, <throat> you know, the business operations and everything. Right now we have a number of different groups out there trying to help, and we're trying to unify and, you know, connect the dots and create a pipeline where any SWAM business includes veterans, uh, minorities, uh, disabled women, are going to be able to get... And um, as I told the mayor in a meeting the other day, our goal is to become the most business welcoming city in the Commonwealth of Virginia. Now, we always say business friendly, but the point is that, you know, we want as a city to become advocates and ambassadors, not adversaries, <coughs> and to really promote <coughs> small business and make it friendly. But we're going to try to create mechanisms that when somebody wants to put in an RFP to do business with the city, that we're going to have a mechanism that's going to actually be able to really assist them doing. So a lot of the, uh, th you know, we are operating under the uh, presumption of what a disparity study would say, and we are trying to go into solution <coughs> phase. We're going to have the study done by the end of this month, and then we're going to crunch the numbers, and then we're going to reconvene with a, a bunch of uh, stakeholders and, you know, try to come up with some definitive recommendations we're talking about a town hall meeting like we had with the arena where we will get it that members from the business community in to really discuss and go over this and come up with some so, uh, so, solid positive solutions that it, that is, that's going to overcome a lot of the problems we're having <coughs> in the city. <coughs> Thank you. Well, that was my last comment on this topic because I have another one I want to bring up. But their point was it probably is true that the uh, the uh, disparity study would confirm what we already know. But if five years from now we haven't gotten any better, if we haven't done a disparity study which meets the legal tenets and criteria, we are still constrained by not being able to do anything more than we currently are doing. And that was what I was hearing from the community, from that particular community, is we've been a long way. Haven't, and I think the mayor and all of us are disappointed by the results. We'd all like to make it better. But we just need to recognize, without that basis, Three years from now, if it's no better, you're in no better position legally to do anything than what we have been doing. And that is the basis of why the disparity study, and I don't know how much you say expensive, but I know we have spent a lot of money on a lot of other industries in this city, the subsidies, which I could delineate here, which I won't, because time is a constraint. But I think that you just need to be able to be prepared to go out and say, we want to make, otherwise what we're saying is five years from now, if it's not better, that we realized that we had an opportunity to make it better if we could, but we didn't do our homework so that five years from now we could do something other than what we're currently doing, and I don't think that's where we want to be. And so that's why I think that's... Now, maybe that's a topic for the retreat, take some time, you know, with the money. About the, I'm not saying asking for a decision to commit money. That's never... You really see me coming here but doing that, but we need to figure out what it costs. But I am asking this other piece with regards to the independent, looking at what we could have so that we have an independent review of procurement decisions that people feel like they have not been uh, treated appropriately, that we have some way where the people who made the decision aren't the people also reviewing it again. Um, but my other topic was, I know we have these... Uh, def oh. Wait, let me finish oh. just on that topic. <coughs> just to say one solution we did do was um, bring let them know about the survey and asking them to let as many people go and take that survey. And then um, just a little prop, I work with the SWAM business group and they will be having the SWAM forum September 30th over at the TCC uh, Center. And I've asked um, Lee Barnes Tony to come and bring word from the, and he's agreed. So the Secretary of the Commonwealth will be there as well. All right. Did you have another comment, Bob? No, that, I'll, just, I'll, I'll be okay. All right. Did you have something else? Two, two other things, if I could. One, I did ask the city auditor, I want to get a hard copy because I only have it on my phone, 
to get a copy of, remember I had asked two questions, when was the letter sent to the city with the final report? And who did it go to? I have provided that to the city manager by my phone. It actually came to the city manager's office last year with the report. I also asked if we get notification of a letter telling us the study would take place. Yes, we did. A copy of that letter also went to the city manager's front office. So I do still want to talk about that topic at the appropriate time executive session. I don't think we have looked at all the administrative issues on that item. So that's just item number two. And the, the third item I had was, I know we have a consultants, lobbyists, but I uh, would like to get, see their assessment of what they think will be the regional impact since uh, based on more than likely the Senate vote will be a filibustered vote on the appropriations bill. More than likely the Politico and all the people are saying will be under about a five-month continuing resolution which will prevent all new starts, including military construction and other stuff based on the public press. No personal information I received through my inside, through my position with the Department of Defense, but I'd like to see how they see the assessment of, of such an occurrence and what impact that would have on the, the regional economy in terms of an economic basis. And that was at my items. Anybody else? Well, Mayor yes. Jones, I'm sorry, I've got one quick comment. I was in Charlotte, North Carolina last week, um, touring the light rail and the transit oriented, um, transit -oriented development. Um, and was able to spend time with Mayor Claude Felter and Councilwoman Vi Lyles. Um, it was a, a wonderful experience. Uh, Charlotte's a beautiful city, and uh, the transit-oriented development that has occurred around their light rail line is nothing short of unbelievable. So, anyway. All right. Okay, everybody finished? <coughs> All right. We'll go to the council agenda review. Uh, first... Uh, under ordinances and resolutions, uh, anybody have any comments on any of the ordinances or resolutions? I'll be voting no on 6A, B, C, D, and E, and I will have a public comment to make, but I'm not going to pull them for individual votes, but I will be explaining my position on that. Item. Voting no on all of them? All right. of them? No 6A, B, C, D, and E. All right. Anybody else? All right, uh, under uh, planning, uh, first item, MCQ Builders, Ms. Henley. Uh, I want to hear that presentation. You want to hear it? Yes. Okay. All right, item two, checkered flag store, checkered flag motor car company, Kempsville. I'm fine with that. <coughs> All right. Been over and looked. Item three, Rio, Lynn Haven, LLC, and Lynn Haven Investments, LLC, Rose Hall, Shannon. Fine with that, sir. Item four, Kings Brant Baptist Church, Lynn Haven, Mr. Wood. That's yeah, a great application. The neighbors are excited about yeah, it. Yeah, they really are. Item five, Gray Star GP2 LLC, and the Terry Companies 5 LLC, Lynn Haven. Mr. Wood. Okay. Item six, uh, City of Virginia Beach, A, the Green Sea Blue Way and Greenway Management Plan as a component of the comprehensive plan and B, Section 801 of the CZO to allow veterinary establishments as a permitted use. Anybody have any problems with either one of those? Okay. No problem, but I would like to congratulate uh, Clay and Calvin on, uh, I guess, about a two-year project that wasn't supposed to take nearly that long, but it's really gotten to be a, a, a very fine uh, management plan that will uh, cover the uh, North Landing River in Virginia Beach, but it will also be a, a joint project with, uh, hopefully, Chesapeake, but also Currituck, because they approved that last night. Yes. And so we'll have a, a truly regional uh, plan and uh, I really congratulate uh, these folks who have worked on this for so long and hope that it uh, does great things in the future. Yeah, all right, John, do you have a comment? Just an observation on this. When these offices are near neighborhoods, one of the things that I've seen around the city, and I see it more and more where offices, the employees are parking in the neighborhood streets. And I can show you some really good examples while going here. 
and therefore to free up parking on the lots for the thing. So I think we need to be looking, you know, at, at these kind of things when that when those happen. That just what the what the parking is and the number of employees, because veterinary places have a high density of them, more so than some other kind of offices of employees. But uh, that is just something that I have increasingly noticed that. Uh, the neighborhoods are the parking places for the businesses, for the employees, not like on like the oceanfront and the businesses. So I just be mindful of that. Thank you. All right. Any more comments on the agenda? If not, Chair will entertain a motion to recess into a closed session pursuant to the exemptions from open meetings allowed by Section 2.2-3711A, Code of Virginia, as amended for the following purposes. Personnel matters, discussion, consideration of, or interviews of prospective candidates for employment, assignment, appointment, promotion, performance, demotion, salaries, discipline, or resignation of specific public officers, appointees, or employees pursuant to Section 2.2-3711A1, council appointments, council boards, commissions, committees, authorities, and agencies, <coughs> and then appointees, evaluation, and salary, city manager, city attorney, city clerk, city real estate assessor, oh. city auditor. May I have a motion? So moved. Second. Madam Clerk, read the roll, please. Mr. Davenport? Aye. Mr. Dyer? Aye. Mrs. Hendon? Aye. Mrs. Kane? Aye. Mr. Moss? Aye. Mr. Rose Hammond? Aye. Mr. Burns? Aye. Mrs. Wilson? Mr. Wood? Aye. Mr. Aye. Mayor Sessions? 